Hello, first graders. Welcome to our new social studies. Please get the Our Place in the World book and let's start. We're still learning about past and present chapter four. And today we're gonna learn and start with a new lesson, lesson two. But let's revise what we covered before. Previously, we learned about past and present and we learned how to know about past and how we know about that this um, uh, lifestyle was something that happened long ago. And we also learn about uh, things that uh, I, can, I can learn from looking at the photographs or I have an interview with an old, older people or read the timelines or visit museums. Today, we're gonna start with a new lesson. So please open your book, page 162. How has daily life changed so we will learn about the daily life long ago and daily life now. If you look at the photo, you think this is from the past or from the present? Very good, from the present. So let's learn more. Okay, as we see in our picture, two classrooms. This is school, so we see one on the left side, the one I'm pointing at, and the one with the teacher and the colors. So do you think which one is long ago, which one is classroom today? Very good. This is a classroom today. because This is the furniture we can see now. This is how our classrooms looks like. And this is something happened long ago. As we can see, children using different uh, tools to sit as they have individual desks with individual chair, probably wearing all the same clothes. So they have uniform. Over here, children sitting in round tables. They all wear their own clothes. You see in the board behind the teacher over here, all the posters that help children to learn and understand. Okay. Let's look at that blue bar on the side. Look closely at the photos. Take notes on page, write down question you have about the photos. So as we see, we look here, I can say, hmm, do they have computer, for example? Do they have projectors? This stuff we have now in our classrooms. Look again, how have the classrooms stayed the same? How have they changed? I can see that the kids still have to sit together, they need to learn, they still have a teacher, they still have different yeah, uh, tools to, to sit or to use, but they still have the board. Maybe more advanced technology for the nowadays classrooms, but still children go to learn. Circle the things that are the same in each pictures. I can see the students in all day picture, not long ago, and I see children also in classroom today. I see teachers and I see teacher. Probably the board here was black and they use chalk here. It's whiteboard that we use marker, but it's still another way to explain to children. Okay, let's go for the next page. All right, explore, compare and contrast. When you compare two things, you think about how they are alike. And when you contrast two things, you think how they are different. So when we compare, that means they are alike. The children at school long ago and children at school nowadays, they had a teacher and we have teacher now. But the contrast, it's something that it's different. Now we have technology, now we have computers, now we have uh, um, different books, different materials to use, posters. All right, so let's see what we have here in a chart. Will this graph work? And let's find this graph. So we have classroom long ago, students who are dresses and suits. So that's something they did last in all the in long ago. Nowadays, students wear comfortable clothing, so they don't have <clears throat> they don't have uniform. They wear what they like. So that's uh, something that we see different. But they both have what? In both schools long ago and schools now, students follow the teachers' directions and instructions. So over here, we're going to write that both.
the students follow teacher's directions. Both <clears throat> picture, which is like when it happened long ago or nowadays. Just gonna keep it alone so you can have your time to write this in the middle. Okay. Let's go to our next page. Read page 146, 153 in your research companions and then look for details about how life long ago and today are the same or different. All right, so we need to find out long ago life looks like what, now life today looks and that different and then they both share what. So let's start. How has daily life changed? Going to school. School is part of our daily life. These boys and girls lived in America a long time ago. Their school had only one room. All the students from all the grades studied there together. So as we see here, their school desks were made from wood. They sat on benches. They carried their lunch to school in pairs, in pails. The teacher rang the bell when recess was over. Then the students went back inside the one room schoolhouse. So that's how the school looked like long ago. Tools for schools. Then and now. So we're going to see what children use long ago when they were learning on what we have nowadays. Long ago, students used different tools to learn. One tool was the abacus. The abacus helped them count. Students moved the beads to add and subtract. I see them sometimes now in some schools, and it comes in colors as well. Students move the beads to add and subtract. Today, students use a calculator. Look at the chalk and state long ago. Students use the chalk to write. They did their work on the state, on a slate. That's called a slate. Today, students can use a computer to write and do their work. So that's the different tools that kids use long ago and what we have nowadays in our school. Let's go for the next page. Rules and manners. Students have always followed school rules. Over time, some rules changed. Other rules stay the same. So even when you're old days, still children have rules to follow. Nowadays, children still have rules to follow. Long ago, students learned in the same classroom. These students were different, different ages, but they all followed the same rules. They listened to the teacher. Today, students follow rules too. They line up, they listen quietly to their teacher. Some teachers let their students help make the rules. So students long ago and nowadays, they still have to follow the rules. As we see in the picture, here the captions, students raise their hands. Over here, students listen to the crossing guard, so they have to follow the rules. Students work together in their classrooms. Students raise their hands to answer a question. They take turns talking. They listen to each other. Then the class, the class learn a lot together. That's what we do, and that's what happened also long ago. There are rules outside the classroom too. Students listen to the crossing guard. They follow her instructions to stay safe. Following the rules keeps us safe. So we, regardless if this happened long ago or it's now, we still have to follow rules. Going places. Transportation is moving people and things from place to place. It's part of daily life. Animals and wagons carried people for a long time. The train was invented in 1804. 
The first train carried things like rocks and coal. Later, trains carried people. People could cross the country in a few weeks. And this is what happened in the beginning. Long ago, people used carriage wagons to travel and to move from place to place. And then we have the train that it used wood and rock and coals was delivering. And now this is the trains that we have today. The Wright brothers flew the first plane in 1903. Look at the planes nowadays. Planes today carry many people. The Wright brothers invented the first plane that could carry a pilot. It flew for only 12 seconds. Planes now fly for longer. The first car costs a lot of money. Not many people had cars. Today, people all around the world use planes, cars to go places. So we can see that transportation also changed and become more faster, and more advantage. Long ago, how people used to commute, move from place to place using animals or trains that will take weeks to travel from city to city. But now we have the fast train. Also, the first airplane was invented by the Wright brothers. 1903 and only flew for 12 seconds but now people can take long flight that it could take days hours to fly and move from continent to continent all right biography henry ford when we say biography it's like you giving information about that person specific person and it's usually that well-known people, people made change for our lives. So Henry Ford started the Ford Motor Company. His company made cars. At first, his cars cost a lot of money. Not many people could buy them. Henry Ford wanted everyone to have cars. He had an idea. He started making cars on an assembly line. So like have a factory, as you see here. Remember the primary source and secondary source? So this is a primary source because this is a picture of the Ford car that exists, Model T. People build cars on an assembly line, like a factory exactly, that make more than one. So of course the prices will be less cheaper. Assembly lines help workers make cars quickly. As they build cars more quickly, the price of a car went down. That meant that more people could buy cars. Henry Ford changed people's life. So people don't need now just to take public transportation, train or something like that. No, people can even own their own car. All right, so let's go back to our book. Now, life long ago, our graph, and we have life today and both. So you can choose anything to compare about. You can Talk about transportation, how people move and commute long ago using wagon, and now people live today, people use cars and airplanes. Also schools, Pe children um, use abacus to, to, cal to calculate or to subtract and add, but now we use calculator. But for both the things that happen, both, Students went to school, follow rules, and for transportation, even when people used to have uh, used to take wagons or train or airplane like nowadays, they still move and commute from place to place. So that was how people can move in uh, the, uh, the, the, the life change from now to uh, long ago, how people also learn children, we also know that children still follow the same rules. Okay. So that's it for today's first graders. Thank you. Hello, first graders. Welcome to a new social study lesson. We are 
on chapter four, lesson three, how have many cultures shaped our country? So please get your book, Our Place in the World and open page 154. Remember, we're learning in this chapter about past and present. And we learned about how um, lives change from long ago to nowadays. Today, we will be learning about culture. And let me remind you with the culture, the definition of the word, or what's the word cultures mean? It means that what other people believe or customs or arts, and we will learn and see um, how many different cultures we have here in the United States. So let's start. All right, page 170, 171. How have many cultures shaped our country? For this lesson, you will learn about different cultures in the United States. And you will learn how many cultures you see around. And look at the picture. We can see kids look different. So that's mean they're coming from different culture, different background, and they have different belief, maybe different food also. We learned that sometimes you learn about special culture from your friends, or you learn about your culture from your group of people from an elderly. Our country, many cultures. People all around the world do many of the same things. People eat, they work, they play. People also do th some things that's differently. The special ways that people do things is called culture. So we all have the same thing. We all have to go to work. We all like to learn. We all um, uh, live in houses. We, we deal with each other. We all have to eat. But there are things that we do it differently. So for example, the languages. People speak uh, are part of their culture. So their food, songs, games also too. Like you be saying, oh, we call this game... Um, so and so, but no, in other culture, they have the same game, but with a different name, or sometimes with a little different rules. The United States was made by people from many cultures. Native Americans lived here long ago before anyone else. Explorers and colonists came. Enslaved people were brought here. Immigrants from many places moved here. They shared their special ways to do things. They all helped build our country. So let's see what we have. If you look at the title, what do you think this text will, all, will be about? One country, many culture. That's mean we're gonna learn about different cultures from different people. Circle the words that you don't know. So this is fun games you can always do. Underlying clues that tell you something all people do. All people eat, they all work, they all play. Who helped build the United States? Immigrants, Native American, explorer, colonists, all made America. Where kindergartens came from? Let's find out. Did you go to the kindergarten? People from Germany brought the idea here over 150 years ago. So now we know it came from Germany. Do you jump rope? Dutch people brought jump ropes here long ago. Our country is full of great things from so many places. Going to Garden Garden is an idea that started in Germany long ago. And now everyone go to the kindergarten before they start school or the majority of people. All right. Why do the United States have things that come from other cultures? Because we know that people move for example, immigrants or enslaved or explored, people came from different parts of the world and lived in America. All right, let's go for next page. Explorer summarize. A summary is a short way to explain what you read. To summarize, to read the whole text, look for the important details, decide which details are important and you can tell. So that exactly like when you watch a movie and one of your friends said, oh, what's the movie about? So you just say the main ideas and the important parts that you really like and you remember. 
let's call you summarize the, the movie, but you don't tell every minute of the movie. So that's called summarizing, means make the long story short and understandable. So what we have here, we have main topic one, we have main topic two, we have main topic three, what we read about the text, what's important, and then we're gonna summarize that. So for example, if we looked at what we read, we see that we learning about different cultures. And we know that people sometimes are liking things and different and other things. Okay, so now the main topic, we have one idea here, it's written for us. The special ways that people do things is called culture. This lesson, we learn about culture. The other thing or the main topic for the second part or another main topic, we said that United States made up of people from many different cultures. So we can write this down. So that will be the main topic or the second main topic. It is, we agree that the United States is made people from many different cultures. And we saw some of the examples like kindergarten came from Germany, jumping rope came from Dutch. Okay, now we have topic three or another idea that we read and learn about that our country is full of great things from other places. Let's write this down. Other. Okay. So now we have okay, so we have topic, the main topic one, the special ways that people do things called culture. So that's something we learn. So I'm summarizing what I have or what I learned or what I knew. Uh, the United States is made, of, uh, made up of people from many different cultures. And then our country is full of great things from other places. And we give example when we were just talking. Now let's put this over here. So summarize. So these are the main topic that I'm having in my head. Now I'm gonna summarize it. As we say, summarize means just give example for the important details that it make difference. So for example, I learn about culture, right? And we learn that it's the special way that people do things. We also learned that the United States was made by people from many cultures. And then also we learned that many great things came from different places. And we're giving examples such as, you know, jumping rope came from Holland 
or Dutch Netherlands um, kindergarten was first um, established in Germany, but moved or people brought it here. Okay. Let's go to page 175. We're going to read together in our research companion, and then we're going to answer the question. But let's see what we have first. We have, again, main topic one, main topic two, main topic three, and we need to put our summaries here. So main topic one, for this part of culture, American food came from many places. All right, so let's read what we have and have more answers for our uh, chart. All right. How have many cultures shaped our country? Alike or different? There are so many people in America. Our country is made of many cultures or ways of life. Cultures are different in some ways. People may talk in different ways and wear different types of clothes. They may eat different foods and play different games. We are alike and different, and that's great. Let's see. All children like to laugh and play. So we see in this picture that little kid play with her pet and having fun with her family. There are also many ways that people are the same. People have friends, people care about their families, people eat, work, and play together. So that's one of the things that people are like. They all do all these things together. American food. Food is part of culture. We think of same, some food as American, but many of these foods came from other parts of the world. Hot dog are a popular food in the United States, but they came from Germany. German immigrants brought them here a long time ago. Do you like pizza? This is another popular American food, but guess what? Pizza came from Italy too. People from Mexico brought tacos here long ago. Today's people eat tacos at school and at home. You can buy them even in stores and restaurants too. So food that we eat and enjoy, and we say, oh, it's American food, actually originally came from different places. Fries were first served in Europe. Ketchup first came from Asia and wasn't made with tomatoes. Hot dogs came from Germany. People in the United States eat about 20 billion hot dogs each year. This is food facts and it's fun and you know it's good to know. Pizza came from Italy. In the United States, we eat about 3 billion pizzas each year. Tacos came from Mexico. People in the United States eat about 4.5 billion tacos each year. Okay, let's see next. Shaping America. Sports. Baseball and football are American sports, but how did they start? Baseball came from a sport in England called rounders. Rounders had a bat and a ball. Americans like this idea. They invented the baseball. Football came from England too. It comes from a sport called rugby. Rugby has tackles and an oval shaped ball. Americans use idea to invent the football. So the main idea was from England, but then people, you know, probably did some different change for the rules and then they became American football or American baseball. Let's see it then and now. Baseball. Baseball is a game that children played a long time ago. Children still play today. Follow. Let's see what the people uh, used to play with. These children are playing stickball at recess long ago. These children are playing baseball at recess today. So it's pretty much the same children still having fun and using same tools, but now made differently. Cloth. Do you ever wear jeans? They were invented by a man named Jacob Davis. He made clothes in Latvia. Then he came to America. He saw that people needed strong pants for work. He invented jeans. Jeans are strong. Now many people in the United States wear jeans. Buildings. 
The White House is where the President of the United States lives. The White House was designed by James Hoban. He came from Ireland. James brought his skills to America. So we look here, most jeans are made from cotton. The White House has been home to many presidents and their families. So if we talked about how uh, Jacobs and how James brought uh, or brought to America or what did he bring to us here? We can say that the genes came from um, Davis or he the one who first invented Davis. And we also learned that the, the, um, the, the designer for the White House or the person who designed the White House, he was an Irish. All right. Around the world, music from around the world. People all over the world like to sing and dance. Every culture has its own music. People can tell about their feelings through music. In Africa, you can hear all kinds of music. African music, music has lots of drumming. It has songs, rattles, and bells. So as we see here, look at the map. This is Africa and that's the djembe is an African drums. Look, it's different than the jazz or the drums you see nowadays, but lots of bands will be using their own tradition or culture, that's culture. Let's see Mexico. People from Latin America also brought their music to the United States. Marachi is one kind of Latin music. Marachi bands play li lively folk music from Mexico. As we see, this band has violins, trumpets, and guitars. Marachi music is popular at parties and weddings. It makes people want to get up and dance. And that's the traditional music band that, you know, come from Mexico and they have their own instruments and their own costume. So as we know now, music came from all over the world and people enjoy it because it's a way that people can express their feelings if they're happy, um, if it's a party, if it's a, um, a celebration for watching a football or a birthday party. Okay, let's go to our book and answer this question. So what we have here, Remember, we talked about topics. So they say food, food is part of culture. And we have a couple of examples like pizza. Um, we also talked about uh, ketchup and we know different people uh, start in a different part of the world. Okay. We also learn about sports, about clothes, buildings. We also learn about music. So that would be topic two or the second part of the topics that you see or you learn about would be sports. And we know that some sports that American uh, play and it's important and popular here that came from a uh, different part of the world. And we also learn about music, that music brought people together. Music was um, a way that people understand and learn um, about their feeling and express their feeling. Okay, that's it for today's lesson, first graders. Thank you. Hello, first graders. Welcome to New Social Studies. Please get to your book and let's start. We're still on chapter four, our book, Our Place Around the World, and we are in lesson four. So, Chapter four, past and present. Open your book, page 178. All right, for this lesson, we will be learning about custom and we're gonna describe how some customs people are um, do different things in a different way. And we will learn about customs from different part of the world that brought here to America. All right, if you look at this picture, you can see this, these people dancing, probably celebrating special event that we will learn about. 
celebrate. Cele celebrate. Customs are things that are a group of people do. Every culture has special custom. One kind of custom is when people celebrate. People celebrate important events like family reunions or the new year. Other celebration can be wedding, graduations, new baby. And I know most of you have been in any of these, either you were invited to a wedding or um, member family that graduate from school or from college that they have special celebration. You buy gifts, you have dinner or meal together. Uh, you meet up, you have fun, you, you wear special clothes to enjoy the day and to enjoy the special event. Some people from Latin countries and cultures celebrate with Quinsera. Say it's like this, Quinsera. It's a first day party for 15 years old. Families bring special kinds of food. They dance, music, and eat special cake. Celebrations are fun. So celebrating, when we celebrate something, it's like you do something special for a special day, like celebrating, for example, the graduation or the wedding or the new baby. And we, when we have a um, holiday, sometimes it's a, it's a special day that we celebrate. So you have this uh, occasion or this event, it's a day off or it's holiday, so we can go and celebrate. So if you look at the picture here, circle words that you don't know, underlying clues tell you what people are doing. So as we can see the people here celebrating the wedding, you can see the bride, the groom, they are wearing special clothes. And over here, this is a celebration for a, quince, a quincera or custom that from Mexico that that girl or the celebration of a 15 years old girl. So she dressed up like a bride. We also could see um, a new baby shower that people, when they have a new baby, they also celebrate, invite other people, uh, provide food, provide, um, uh, buy gifts for the babies. So there's also another way of celebration. Um, uh, graduation, people wear nice clothes, go out, have fun with all family members and uh, celebrate that special um, day or that special event that um, their cousin, their nephew, their brother or sister graduate from college or from school. So over here for this picture, we see this family celebrate uh, the Quinsera or the 15 years old uh, for a girl that she turned 15. It's a special uh, for Latin America to have a special uh, party and eat special food and also have special guests. All right. Now we're learning again about, or we're using it again about compare and contrast. When you compare, you show how things are like. So a like means it's the same, like, oh, we do the same here, we do it here. And when you have a contrast, this is when it's something different. So over here, family reunion or Quinsera, and both are celebrations. So if we look for the first one, this is family reunion, or like family get together, they, they celebrate, they eat special food, they, uh, they greet each other because probably didn't see each other for some time. So it's a party that all family members celebrate. And over here, the Quinsera, it's a party for 15 years old that a girl turned 15, so she has a special uh, celebration. And for both, what do you think for both? They both they will have fun for both both celebration will be eating special food. All right, let's read our research companion and answer what we have to do here. Write about the holidays in the graphic organizer. So we have the graphic organizer. We have you have to put the holidays you want to write about it, what they are alike, and what they're different. So here they're both what when you celebrate they both eat food or they both um, decorate the place. And then what, um, what are we gonna see to write it here and the other bubble? So let's go for our book and read. What are customs? Our many customs. Customs are part of our life. 
Many customs are things people have done for long ago. Sometimes some children may have customs different from yours. You can learn about their customers. Greetings are one kind of custom. People who speak Spanish and English might say hola to greet friends. They might also say hi. Some people might wave or give a high five when they say goodbye. So different way to celebrate or to greet others. So Huan say hola to greet her friends. Rosa waves goodbye to friends. So this is something you do also. People from Poland shake hands when they greet others. They have other customs too. One custom is a dance called the polka. So that's the Polish or the Polish um, dance that comes from Poland. Children in South, Af uh, South, South Korea do not shake hands. They bow when they greet an adult. <clears throat> Korean American children may do both. So as you see. All right. So children dance of a festival in Co Krakow, Poland. All right. Name one custom in the United States. Maybe when you meet a friend, you say hello or hi or how, how are you? All right. Let's go for next. Holidays. Around the world, people celebrate special days. And we learn and agree that when you celebrate, that means you have a special day. So in these days, you have special food, uh, you have more fun, and usually people around you share with you the celebration. These days are called holidays. Holidays are part of culture. Some holidays are the same in many places. Other holidays are different. When people come to the United States, they celebrate holidays from their home country. They share them with people here. So we we'll look here, children in Sweden wear candles on St. Lucia Day. So that's in Sweden. In China, people celebrate the new year with parades. Children in India celebrate a colorful holidays every year called Holi. People in Mexico have parades on the Day of the Dead. They remember people who have died. So as you see, children all, all around, around the world celebrate special events and special holidays. People celebrate some holidays with special food. They have parades, parties. They enjoy seeing their families and friends. People enjoy holidays all around the world. So let's go back to our book. So over here, you can talk about any things. We can celebrate, talk about celebration, for example, the, the Chinese New Year or the, um, uh, the Mexican special day, or you can talk about uh, Indian when they have different colors and um, all that thing they do. But as we see, they have probably different food, special day, um, the family gather, they have fun together and then, at the end, both will be having fun. So we can say children in India, you can write here, for example, children in India celebrate a colorful holidays every year. And you can put another uh, side. Um, people in Mexico have parades on the day of death. If we go back, you can always come here and you can choose anything of children in Sweden or in China, how people celebrate the new year. So you can choose any of the two captions and you talk about it. And then you have to say, what's, uh, what's the, um, the common in both? As you see, they both have fun or they're both uh, doing a parade, for example, the China for the new year and for um, the day of the death. Or as we see here, they face, uh, paint their face or use colors, uh, colorful um, holidays that they wear colorful clothes and colorful um, um, paints for their face. Okay. All right. Think about it. Write about it. What a custom. What is a custom? So you're gonna say what is a custom? The custom is a act that some people do together and describe one custom that you read about. So anything you like to, to talk about, you can say. You can say that 
people in Mexico have the parade for on a day of dead or children in India or um, um, the reunion for people when they have special holidays or the way the people greet each other in a different part of the world. All right, so it's custom come from different people. They have different things that have been doing it together. So whatever you have in your book, you read about it, you like it, you can just put a um, simple example. All right. Tell about three ways people in your community celebrate their custom. So you can see people around you. You can say some people for the new year, they celebrate like the Chinese people, for example, celebrate it with parades. And you can say, for example, you have different people you know about that they like to go to the beach or people like to celebrate and watch the fireworks. So there is lots of different way that people um, show their fun and enjoy a special holiday and a special uh, event. Okay, first graders, that was it for our lesson today, lesson four. Thank you.